Continuing with the theme of gas air explosions, this time I'm going to look at a mixture of natural gas, methane and air and to see what its burning properties are. To do this, you need a drinks can. Um, in a school, I guess, you should use a soft drinks can. In the top, there is a large hole. And in the bottom, just with a pair of scissors, you make a smaller hole, like that. Then, you need to fill the can with gas. Take a Bunsen burner, unscrew the chimney, finger over the small hole, and fill it with gas. This can take a surprisingly large amount of time and some gas will leak around, but it's not that dangerous. Don't worry about it. When the can is full and ready to go, I'm going to put it on a tripod which has a gauze which doesn't have a ceramic center because I want a good airflow into the bottom of the can. So I'm going to put that on the tripod and I'm going to light the gas. Now initially what you have there is a very gas rich mixture and you get the characteristic luminous flame of a mixture which is rich in gas. As the gas burns of course, methane being less dense than air, it rises up inside the can, air enters through the bottom hole and the mixture gets steadily richer in air. So what we have is a, is a mixture of gas and air which is getting steadily poorer in gas, richer in air. You see the flame going blue, then it appears to disappear and shortly afterwards, I don't know quite how long, but <laughs> shortly afterwards you get an explosion. Under these circumstances it's a very modest explosion um, and again therefore presents pretty much no health and safety hazards. Um, remember the rules of explosion, they're only dangerous if you confine the gases and in this case when the mixture explodes most of the pressure comes out of that very large hole in the bottom so there is no prob uh, possibility of the can exploding, shattering, flying, damaging etc. It's a very simple straightforward demonstration. It's quick, it's easy, and it has a certain amount of spectacle. going to light the gas. Now initially what you have there is a very gas rich mixture and you get the characteristic luminous flame of a mixture which is rich in gas. As the gas burns of course, methane being less dense than air, it rises up inside the can, air enters through the bottom hole and the mixture gets steadily richer in air. So what we have is a, is a mixture of gas and air which is getting steadily poorer in gas, richer in air. You see the flame going blue, then it appears to disappear and shortly afterwards, I don't know quite how long, If it's spectacle you're after, the old chemist's rule, if a bit's good, a lot's better, applies. And instead of using a small drinks can, you can use a large metal can. This is a five litre paint tin. It must be a metal can. It's no good using one of the more modern cardboard um, cylinder cans. That 
doesn't give us the safety that we need. So you may have to hunt a bit, but you're looking for the largest metal can you can find. And in the base of the can, a small hole. And in the lid of the can, a slightly smaller hole. Now, the point about explosions, as I reiterate in all of this series, is you have to provide them with a weak point that will fail predictably. And in this case, we don't want the can to rip apart, we want the lid to blow off. And this is the weak point that we build into the system. We put the lid on, but we don't put it on so tightly that it won't give first. It's important that the lid is the weak point, and when it when, the, when we get the explosion, the lid will fly off. It will fly up into the air with some violence, but again it's going directly up. If I were doing this in a school, then I probably would put a safety screen in front of the whole apparatus, but as always for these series, we've taken away the safety screen, the only things in here are video cameras and they're a good distance away, so that you can see better what's going on. Exactly the same thing is going to happen here, in exactly the same way. But this time, there's a great deal more gas, and you will be surprised just how long it will take to reach that critical mixture, which incidentally is around 10% methane to 90% air. And this is a fairly reproducible result, and in, in the past when I've done this, it's come out at around 11 minutes. So, this is in a quite a good fun set and forget experiment. You can set it up, start doing something else, pupils have forgotten all about it, when suddenly you get the result that you're looking for. So, the same procedure again. Fill the can with gas from a Bunsen burner whose chimney has been removed. This takes a surprisingly long time, just as the burning takes a long time, the filling can take a long time. Wait for a while to expel some air from the top, then put your finger over, and as I say, it takes perhaps a minute or so to, to fill the can with this much gas. When that's done, we're ready to go again. Stand on a tripod so that there's airflow in from underneath. Light the gas and wait. Sometimes, for inexplicable reasons, this simply doesn't work. And if that happens to you, then treat this like a firework that hasn't gone off. Leave it for at least half an hour before you approach it, and then preferably with the aid of a long probe, push it off the tripod and let it hit the bench or the floor, and only then is it safe to approach it. So if you think it's failed, 
don't approach it until it's had at least half an hour and then approach it with some caution. And in that way, you and your class will survive the experience.